Hello, my name is Peter West, and we're gonna do another Peplink University video on the 2500EC. EC, EC stands for Edge Compute. And so I've already unboxed it because I feel like showing you how I unbox a video a, a router is irrelevant. So I've got the, the 2500EC right here. I've, it comes with two power ports, cords. Uh, so right here, I've got little uh, rack here, uh, rack, uh, Guides this allows you to pull it pull it out on the rails. I've got the screws to install it in the rack, um, the the rack ears, and then the rack rails. Um, it comes with a little user guide, which basically says when you turn it on, plug in and go to one nine two one six eight one one and type admin admin. Um, so that's pretty much what it says. But let's talk about and then I've got my rack ear uh, rails, which I'm going to show you how to install um, as part of this video. The 2500 EC, when it was first announced, I was a little skeptical because of the EPX. I was like, why would you want the 2500 EC over the EPX? And here's the thing. The 2500 EC is a single U, basically four module EPX that's not customizable. So we have two 10 gigabit plus WAN slash LAN, but they're configured as WAN out of the box. Two 10 gigabit SFP plus LAN slash WAN, but configured out of the box as LAN. Eight gigabit Ethernet um, WANs, but can also be configured as a LAN. And then eight gigabit Ethernet LAN, which could also be configured as WANs. However, unique what's, what's common with the Peplink balance series versus like the EPX is we have LAN bypass. This allows you to put this router in drop-in mode, and if the router is off, your firewall or device below the PEP link plugged into the LAN port will actually still get its public IP address. So the Balance 2500 EC is an EPX powerhouse, edge compute powerhouse with LAN bypass capabilities and modules to support that. Additionally, you have the management port. The management port is gonna give you basically um, an untagged LAN access. So if you configure all these ports as WAN and then forget you can't plug into the LAN, um, you can plug in here. So it's a non-managed LAN port basically on the untagged network. Then you have the console port, which is RS-232. You have a new smaller OLED uh, a LCD display where you have like your, your commands to control the router. On the back of the router, we have dual power input. I can spin this around. So we have dual power supplies that are replaceable. We have a power switch, two USB ports and a VGA. It is important to know that these are for engineering only. The, US, the VGA, the USB and the power switch are not utilized uh, for the router. This is for engineering only. So let's, uh, let's set this thing up. So the first thing, I've got several complaints, uh, even with the EPX, on how to install the rails. Uh, these rails are designed to, to basically click in to a square, the uh, rack, and then they can click in right here as well, and that's gonna pop it out. And then you can set and you can spread it out to fit. If you have the circle rack, like uh, rack, you can unscrew these and then just put it up and then screw your screws through it. So it works just fine. You're gonna slide this out and you're gonna get this guy right here. There's a little tiny tab. So here's the, this is the piece that gets mounted to the router. There's a little tab right here. If you click this tab, you can slide this out and that will allow you to install the ears on the side of the router. So if I grab my rack screws, my rail mounting screws, and come over here with my trusty screwdriver. I can line this up right here. So get those installed and then come over here and do the same thing to the other side. So I'm gonna pop this out, slide this system out here, click the little, this little tab right here pull that and that's going to let me slide this out. 
I've had a lot of people try to hook these in and the EPX, the EPX mounting rails work exactly the same, except for they have little metal tabs that slide into these, slide into these holes. So if EPX will mount into these holes, the 2500EC looks like it screws in um, right there. So slightly different, but works either way. Beautiful. Okay. Now I can grab my front ears and my ear screws. These are going to be the smaller screws. And you should have six of those. Yep, I do. So three and three. And then I'll mount those. So now all you'd have to do is set up your rack and then simply slide the ears now. So we're gonna slide that on, click the little blue tab there and close that in. And then on the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna <laughs> slide this in, click the little blue tab and then voila. And then these can be adjusted to fit the depth of your rack right there. Let's talk about the specifications of this guy. So we have, and we talked about your physical interface. Okay, so we've got 16 gigabit, up to 16 gigabit ethernet WANs, up to four 10 gigabit SFP pluses, one USB WAN that we can connect like a max adapter to. We have eight plus gigabits of routing throughput two plus gigabits of speed fusion throughput. We have anywhere from, it recommends up 20,000 plus users, 4,000 speed fusion peers, 1500 APs can be managed by the controller. It supports full speed fusion, supports drop-in mode, supports high availability, full content mil filtering database. It has LAN bypass, um, remote user access. So L2TP VPN and open VPN support, LACP NIC bonding, dual hot swappable power supplies. It's only a one U rack mount and consumes only 650 or 65 nominal uh, cons watts of consumption and 150 watts max. Um, it only weighs 19 pounds and supports 32 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So. I mean, you're talking an incredibly powerful router um, that this thing supports. So let's go ahead and boot it up and take a look at the UI. So I've kind of got my power cord here. So I'm gonna plug this in. And once again, the, the rear power and US, and these rear power USB and VJ, these are for engineering, not for us. So it's gonna turn on, it's gonna, you plug it in, power supplies are gonna adapt, and then it's gonna turn on by itself, even with the power switch off. So you're gonna hear it kick in like a like a turbine jet here in a few seconds. There we go. So it's booting up, and you can see our LCD display is is booting up here. Um, so I have a Max adapter that I'm gonna plug in as a as my as an LTE WAN or cellular WAN. It's gonna be 5G. Now, being that this is an edge compute device, Peplink in touch and in control also allows for RS-232, SSH, Telnet, RDP, VNC, HTTP, HTTPS, out-of-band management. So we could also plug in a 16 port, or an eight port, USB to RS-232 adapter, and our second USB port here, and plug this in. And now I have, RS-232 out-of-band management for my network devices that might be on the uh, on this infrastructure as well. So this, this has uh, 5G backup capabilities, 20 WANs possible, um, RS-232 out-of-band management, as well as SSH, Telnet, RDP, VNC, HTTP, and HTTPS. And then we can expand it with 5G with the max adapter um, if we wanted to, the, let's get it online. So with the max adapter, 
it should boot up and actually connect. So here's my LCD screen. I can go to system status, WAN, and scroll all the way down because I have so many internet connections here to mobile. There's my mobile internet. And so it's still booting up. So that should boot up here in a minute and we should have a cellular connection. I also have a fiber optic internet connection here so I can, or ethernet handoff. So I'm gonna plug that into my WAN port. It's gonna bring that online. There we go. <laughs> so the edge compute portion of this is important because that also means that this thing does something that most routers don't do. This has built-in hypervisor. We have a Xeon processor with a significant amount of memory and a one terabyte SSD built in. This allows us to run or sideload virtual machines. I've already created a YouTube video on how to do that specifically, but what I've done is I've set up a Ubuntu box on my Windows machine here and just using Hyper-V so that I can actually manage that hypervisor. So once this comes online, let's see if our router's online. So here's my balance 2500 EC. I show it online. Now it, it's gonna come with 8.2.1 S177 or S202. Um, I've upgraded this to the 8.3 um, RC uh, release candidate. So let's go to settings, remote web admin, and let's take a look at the UI. So here, here I'm in my UI. You'll see this VLAN as WAN 1 through 40. This is not default. Um, I have purchased the VWAN as LAN license that allows me to create virtual interfaces um, as WANs. And so I've got those set up here. So by default, you can see WAN 1 through 8. That's my gigabit ethernet. SFP 1 and 2, and then my, my mobile internet, uh, which should activate here shortly. The 2500 is gonna have Speed Fusion Protect. So we have our Speed Fusion Protect service. So I can choose my Speed Fusion Tech location and automatically configure Speed Fusion Protect. I'm gonna have my network tab, kind of like the old Max firmware, right? So I'm at my network tab and my advanced, my network's gonna give me my, my LAN and VLAN options, my port settings, so I can configure my VLANs and trunking capabilities, uh, my captive portal management, and then configure my WANs. 8.3 also includes this new synergy mode where you can actually manage additional peplink routers from the interfaces of the router. So for example, I've got these eight gigabit ethernet interfaces. I could plug in another peplink router, enable synergy mode on WAN one, and then actually manage the upstream peplink device uh, connected to that. But more importantly, if we go to the system tab, I can go to storage manager and I can actually configure how my system is using memory. So right now, MediaFast is almost ineffective with TLS 1.3 SSL and basically the whole world has gone SSL. So I can go in here and configure this. I can drag my MediaFast to zero. Um, I don't need a content hub, but I'll, let's set, I'll keep 100 gigs of content hub. And then I can give myself 739 gigabytes of KVM virtualization capability. Hit format, hit yes. And that's gonna provision my storage on the uh, 2500 EC for virtualization. So I'm also then waiting for my Ubuntu machine here to boot up, kind of doing some weird stuff here. Let's, uh, I popped out this CD drive for me. And turn it back on and see what happens there. Once we've formatted the hard drive, we then just go to advanced and we can enable our edge computing capabilities, application, Docker, and KVM. And once again, I've got videos on that. Watch those videos and get detailed information on how to do that. The, the 2500 EC is a multi-gigabit SD-WAN powerhouse. This can be used for edge compute capabilities, branch connectivity, data center connectivity. It can act as a hub for uh, all of your speed fusion tunnels because it supports 4,000 peers and two plus gigabits. It is not limited and capacity, it's the two plus is because depending on how many VMs you have loaded, it might affect the performance. 
And so the idea here is that you're gonna get two plus gigabits of, of bonding performance, as well as eight plus gigabits of routing performance um, with edge compute capabilities, the ability to add 5G out of band management, RS-232 uh, for in-touch, uh, uh, even further out of band management of your LAN devices. And so I think that we're gonna see this being deployed in a lot of data centers. And I'm really excited to be one of the first people to play with this router. We showcased this last month at the Peplink Tech Summit, and we had phenomenal feedback and raving reviews about the technology. And I look forward to deploying this out in a lot more environments as edge computing becomes more and more prevalent. Thank you and have a great day.